I'm Dan Johnson talking to Ronnie Smith, who is uh, a man many people know from South Mississippi Light Aircraft, That's and right. you've been a Rotax guru for, I think, longer than Rotax has been around, or something like that, but a long time anyway. Yes. You're a very experienced right. guy. But recently, you did something different than what we know about you, Ronnie. Well, you took quite a trip. What was that about? That's correct. Uh, you know, we're always talking about the engines and what experience and stuff that you had with the engines. So I got an opportunity to uh, to mount the 915 engine on my airplane and uh, going with two other friends and stuff with them on a trip to uh, the, doing the Lewis and Clark trip all the way across the United States and then from there up into Canada all the way to Alaska and back. Holy so, cow, that is, that is one long trip. Right, uh, so Lewis and Clark Expedition was a famous thing that uh, was done way back in an early absolutely, time. Absolutely, absolutely. And those guys really did a job evidently because they didn't have a 915 no, 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 engine to help. No, no, they didn't have the 915 to do that with. <laughs> so, uh, that, but that's very cool. That is a long yep. trip from where you are just to, let's say, Washington State would be a very long that, way. That we was a better part of a month getting to that end wow. of that trip. Of course, we took a lot of time. We wouldn't rush to do any things. Got caught in weather a couple of times, but it was an amazing trip. And especially, uh, the co of course, the most amazing part, or one of the easiest parts was for when I'm sitting behind this new 915, it's very comfortable sitting behind it because I know it's going to stay up front for me. Yeah, now you have experience with all of them going back to the smallest two strokes up to the whole nine series yep. engines until this one came out. Now yep. you're accumulating a lot of knowledge yep. and experience with this we're, one. We're, we're accumulating hours, putting hours on the engine itself. Uh, this the, this particular engine is a is one of the pre-production engines, which when we get back after the show, we're going to take off and then put a production engine back. Yeah, on they'd it. probably like to get a hold of this engine after all well, that time. Well, it's going into the back into the training environment, so ah, we're going to get okay. it back in back in at that point in time. But uh, no hiccups. No, I mean it just the fuel burn was very very good. Tell me with it. tell me a little bit about your fuel burn on it, because that's something people uh, know it's more powerful. We'll come back powerful, to that. More powerful, and then of course, uh, obviously the fuel burn goes up as you get more horsepower out of it. But I'm normal. Normal fuel burn on this trip was probably between four and a half, five gallon an hour. Well, but that's about the same as a 912. Yep. Well, not quite. The 912 is a little better than that. Well, I guess. one of the planes that we was flying with had to stock 100 horse, and I was always taking way less fuel than he was. Ah, uh, you were. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 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 912 ULS, the that's carbureted the, the version. Carbureted 100 horse. And uh, you were using less, less fuel, fuel than he was. Flying behind him. Now, mind you, I'm pulled way back. I see. Okay. So, so you were able to throttle in, back. In, he's having to run I'm a little in, harder. Yeah. He's running hard, and I'm running in eco mode. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, but so that's a difference. very interesting oh, yeah. comparison for people that oh, say, well, normally, if you want to go at 915 speeds, then yeah, you're going to use a little more. Yeah, but. you're going to be you go, but you're still going to burn less than the stock 914 will. If the you know, 914. Yeah, the 914 okay. will. Uh, then the 915 will burn less fuel than the 9. 14 wheel. Okay, the two the two turbocharged right. engines correct. from Rotax. One of the, one the of 914 the guys based on the 80 horsepower 912, yep. and this one based on the 100 horsepower 912. 912 IS engine. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, so the fuel burn then very efficient uh, for you, um, and 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 less than the other one. That that's pretty cool. Had you gone a little more hammer down, throttle uh, when in. When I'm flying by myself and I and I bring the uh, manifold pressure and the speed up, I'm burning between five and a half six gallon an hour. Okay, but at what and now what kinds of uh, differences in performance numbers are you seeing at the higher burn rate, Ronnie? Uh, well, you're going from about 95 mile an hour to 115 mile an hour. Okay, so quite a boost. Oh yeah. Uh, but yes. of course, you you always pay a penalty to go faster. It, it, it pay, uh, as you go faster, it costs more money. Yeah, yeah. right. It's just the nature of the beast. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Application of yes, power, absolutely. but that wasn't your goal with this no, airplane. No, our goal was, was go slow and look and enjoy the scenery, was the whole goal of the trip. Now, uh, one thing a turbocharged engine will do is handle the power up to a higher altitude, and you had to cross some mountains. Yeah, we crossed so several, did you several mountain the ranges that way? and stuff, and the engine itself, is it's uh, it'll give you full horsepower at 15,000 foot. And the computers mapped to 23,000 foot. So is that right? Okay. It, it'll it'll get you up there very very easy. I uh, I flew it uh, over 15,000 foot several times, and it just it, it, 
power. It was just ease for the engine. It's no no issues. Now you've gotten it. into an, an, an altitude there where not very many LSA or ultralight or light kit pilots go. That's correct. And yeah. when you were there, what was the fuel burn experience at those well, altitudes? Well, that's when I was coming back by myself, and I was at the 32 inches of manifold pressure, 5200 RPM, and it was between the five and a half, six gallon. Okay, hour so range. still not even at that altitude, oh, yeah. not that bad a burn rate, that, and you're still seeing the 135 or so horsepower at that altitude. Yeah, I was at uh, probably about 55 percent, 60, 55, oh, okay, 60 percent okay. horsepower at that. Okay, so. Um, so the engine itself, describe the basics of the engine and what Rotax has said about power output about it, just for folks well, that haven't the, paid attention. this engine has got more updates in it. It's, it's beefed up so much more than any of the other engines. Uh, for instance, the whole bottom end is different. The case, the crankshaft, ah, okay. all that's totally different on this engine. It has larger, lower rod bearings. They went from 34 millimeter to 38 millimeter, oh. larger. The crank sh crankshaft itself has uh, the wider webs and stuff on it. It's got a totally different, the way the crank's pressed together. So when it's pressed together, it's basically as a single unit at that point in time. I see. Uh, as a turbocharged unit, it has piston oilers. It's squirting oil on the bottom of the pistons to keep them cool. Oh. So that that keeps the pistons and stuff running. Okay, that's a cooler. change from the previous oh, that's, engines. That's a total change. Yeah. And the case itself is is quite a bit beefed up from the IS engine. Of course, the IS engine Because case, of the turbo boost it's going to have to correct. deal with? Okay. Because yeah, the, they beefed this engine up. Of course, the gearbox is totally different. It mounts in the same footprint. It but even it, looks it, different. Yeah, I mean, as I look at the front of the engine yeah, there, that's two not inches, the same. Yeah, it's two inches longer. Yeah, it's longer. Yeah. And it has, uh, the new production ones has three clutch packs in it that, that uh, three. absorb. Yep. Wow. And it uses a torque tube in there to absorb the pulse of the engine. So it's a totally different gearbox. Today, it needs an in-flight adjustable prop. At the present of time, it's a hydraulic governor, a hydraulic prop, constant speed prop that they're that, they're, that you've got to put on it. They're working on the, it, it's not only, uh, yeah, I can mount a fixed pitch prop on it, but what happens, the com changes the complexity of what the computer's reading. Oh. And the computer is reading. I considered that part, yeah, but I The computer's see. reading torque and horsepower. And as you call on the engine more, it gives you more up to, I mean, this engine will, this particular one will give me up to 49 inches of boost. And that's wow. that's oh. quite a boost on yeah. it when they'll do that. Now production engines That's a lot more than the nine fourteen. Yeah, nine fourteen was only forty inches, forty okay, inches. Okay, yeah, that's quite a bit more than yeah, that's and that's where of course the difference in the cubic inch of the engine plus the extra boost, bigger turbo, is where they get the horsepower out of this engine. Yeah, I see. And Actually, they had to detune this engine down to get it down to 141 horsepower. Is that right? Yes, it it, it puts out it, it can it is capable of putting out quite a bit of horsepower. Wow! There you are up in this high mountain territory, you know, places where you got to get out of a short runway and you got to you got to climb good to do that. Yes. What kind of performance that way did you get well, out of the airplane, Ronnie? We was loaded pretty heavy with with all the uh, supplies and the tents. A two-month trip, so two you had all, trip. two months worth of yeah, stuff with you, huh? I, okay. I quite a bit, of, well, actually too much stuff really uh, <laughs> uh, in there, but uh, anyhow, yeah, it would get out in those situations, and if you shoved it up and held it there, you'd get 14, 1,500 foot a minute rate of climb with it loaded. And that's at probably gross or right at gross, huh? Right, pretty much at, uh, pretty much over gross. Yeah, <laughs> so you were you were still doing 1,500 yeah, feet a minute. Yeah, that's a full tank of fuel. Yeah, yeah and full fuel, full so you can't yeah. really get much more in the airplane yeah. and the engine still performed that well oh, for absolutely. you. Oh, absolutely, yes. It, and then the, the computer's controlling that horsepower, and that's where it needs a constant speed prop on it, because computer senses it needs more horsepower as you pull back on it, and it keeps giving you more boost to give you enough boost to uh, keep the horsepower So up. it's managing all that you don't Absolutely. need to really do anything with Absolutely. that do you yes, the, yep. now when you flew up to Alaska you flew with a couple other buddies were they helpful for you oh absolutely yeah they you said the, you had the some guys high time I, guys with you yeah uh, uh, <clears throat> Gary Haley was uh, he was flying a 914 Highlander and my and also Jim Marsh was flying a stock hundred horse and uh, of course he was the limiting factor of what we could do <laughs> with the hundred horse which done very well yeah I I'm will, sure it did. I, I don't take away from it it done a good that's job that's a carbureted so the one yeah, we've known for many years yes, now okay. right, right so but anyhow in Alaska we went up to Denali 
Uh, Did you? Yeah. Went up into the glaciers and made the trip up in there, and it was a beautiful day that day. So we climbed to 10,000 foot and got some pictures wow. at that. Wow. You know, it's still the mountain just over becomes you even at 10,000 foot. You yeah, know? it's still well yeah. above you at oh, that point. Yeah. Well above yeah, you. Way, way above me at that well, point. Well, very cool, Ronnie. Sounds yeah. like an excellent adventure. Oh, and did. your son, Morris, said he came back from this trip more relaxed than I think I've ever seen him. So yeah, well, it, you obviously know, it's, wasn't it's one too of those, stressful. <laughs> one of those dream trips that you always, are in the back of your mind, that you want to go do and not be in a no time frame to go do it in. And that's that's what we do. Beautiful. Done. Well, it good was, for you for taking okay. that opportunity and for sharing with us the experience of this new oh, engine absolutely. through it's that process. Super, super engine. And I, uh, I, I just can't say enough about the engine, how well it performs. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. All right, give me two web addresses for people that want to know even more, or maybe need some of your services or other things. I want you to give me your web address as South Mississippi and South, the Rotax one. Well, Mississippi Light Aircraft web address is flysmla.com. Okay. And then, of course, the factory web page is, is uh, flyrotax.com. All right, there you so, go. And you can get a lot of information. Uh, Both are, sites are loaded with details and yep. information. Pack you can full. also find lots more about all matters Rotax about Rand's airplanes and so much more, including some South Mississippi stuff on bydanjohnson.com. There you go. Thanks so much for joining Ronnie Smith and myself Great. here at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh 2018. All right, mighty good.